Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Friday, August 24th edition of Trading Software Demonstration. I'm Jason Galano. I'm an account manager with FXDD. I've been with the company for five years. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Before we get started, though, I just want to briefly mention our disclaimer. Our disclaimer is that we do not give buy, sell, or hold recommendations, and that trading is risk risky. You want to make sure that you're trading only with risk capital that will not affect your lifestyle. And also that the information contained herein is for educational purposes only and is not meant to be construed as any type of trading advice. So without further ado, let's go over to our MetaTrader. And what we're going to what we're going to cover today is basically how to set up a workstation and how to how to uh, you know put some of the most commonly used Forex tools on your charts. And if anybody has any questions, how's that, Larry? Can you hear me better now? Okay. Thanks for the feedback, Larry. Definitely appreciate it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it. We're going to go to our MetaTrader. Okay. So I currently have the MT4 set up like this. Now, if you're any type of a diligent trader, what you're going to want to do, first of all, is open up more than one chart. You don't have to have them showing all at once, but a diligent trader always does um, their analysis across multiple time frames. You know, so what you may want to do is have one uh, you know, short-term time frame, one medium-term time frame, and one long-term time frame. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up multiple charts and we'll work with the euro for now. So let's go ahead and do that. The way we open up multiple charts is we go ahead and click file and then new chart and we'll go ahead and we'll choose euro dollar again. Right now I have a euro dollar five minute chart open but now what you'll see happens is we get a, uh, a second tab on the bottom of our on the bottom of our charts and this is a euro dollar one hour chart and that's exactly the way we'll keep it but let's go ahead and modify it so that it fits our trading needs we're first going to zoom in a little bit by clicking the uh, the plus sign with you know, the magnifying glass with the plus sign in it that's going to zoom us in just a little bit and then we're going to change it you, know, you, you notice that as we zoom in it becomes clearer and clearer that this is a bar chart and not a candlestick chart so the easiest way to change it to candlesticks is by clicking the candlestick button right here. And here it is. And then what we'll also do is we'll click the chart shift button, which will, you know, what that does is it moves the, uh, the rightmost candles away from the y-axis or the price axis or whatever it is you want to call it, so that it leaves room for us to sort of conjecture as to what's going to happen next. So if we go ahead and click this button right here, this is our chart shift button. So we click that, and we notice that there's a wide open space that opens up right here. Let me just go check to see if that's what we have. Okay, we already have that on the uh, five-minute chart. So this chart looks okay for now. I mean, what I like to do personally is I like to remove the grid from my charts. Very easy to do that. I find the grid is sort of distracting in a way. If anybody's curious as to how to do that, you simply right-click on the chart, and then you see this little menu pop up, and you'll see grid right here. If you click grid, it'll get rid of the grid. And now you have just a blank chart with the candles on it. And we'll do the same thing with our one-hour chart. Let's right-click and then do away with the grid. And then let's do this one more time. Let's open up our long-term time frame chart. Let's go ahead and click file and new chart one more time. Euro dollar, and here we go. Now we have another chart. Now you'll notice that this one opened up as a one hour, also. Now, what's the quickest way to change a time frame for a chart? You see up here in the, uh, you know, right above the chart, you've got our periodicity, ta uh, you know, the uh, the toolbar window. This lets you quickly and easily uh, pick between different time frames. Daily is represented by D1, so we'll choose day. We'll choose. We'll click D1. Instantly, it'll change to a euro-dollar daily chart. 
And once again, we'll zoom in a little bit by clicking the magnifying glass. And as we see, it comes up as a, can as a bar chart. So let's change that to candlesticks one more time by clicking the candlesticks button. And then the chart shift button on the right will bring us all the way to the present. Well, it'll open up the space between the most recent candle and the, the price axis. So now what we have is we have three charts open. We have a euro dollar five minute, a euro dollar. Oh, let's also get rid of the grid. So my apologies. Let's right click and then click grid. And now we've got three time frame. We've got one currency pair with three different time frames open at the same time. So the next thing that we're going to want to do, well, the next thing that I'll show you to do is how to put some of the most commonly used Forex trading tools on these charts. And we're going to start with a moving average. What we'll do is we'll go to the navigator window on the left side here. And we'll scroll down to where it says moving average. And we'll click and hold down on it with our left mouse button. You know, we'll wait till it's highlighted in blue. And we'll click and hold down with our left mouse button. And we will drag our mouse cursor over to the right. And when we're ready, we just drop it on the chart. Now the next thing that you'll see is you'll see this box pop up, which lets you modify your parameters. The thing that you're going to, you know, that you'll most likely be modifying is your period. So basically, the two most commonly used moving averages in Forex are the 100 time frame and the 200 time frame. So let's go ahead and put in a 100 time frame. And let's make that red. Keep it red. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then there's, well, before we even do that, you know, there's, uh, um, we usually, you know, for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to leave it on a simple moving average. A simple moving average, you know, some of you may have heard that there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of different moving averages. And you can see right here that, yes, there are. The two most common ones are simple and exponential. Simple is just an average of the last uh, 100 periods, the last 100 ticks. So what is it, what is, what would a 100 time frame moving average be on a euro dollar daily chart? That means it's the average close for the last 100 days, and that's it. It's just an average. The exponential gives more weight to certain ticks. So, you know, it's a little bit more complicated. Right now, we're just going to stick with the simple. So we'll go ahead and use simple. We'll apply it to the close, and we'll click OK. And now we have our moving average on the chart. And we'll also throw in one more, just for the heck of it. Let's go ahead and put in a moving average again. Same procedure. We left click and hold down our, our, our mouse button, move it over to the right, and then drop it on there. But except this time, we're going to change the period to 200. And we'll change the, st we'll change the color as well. We'll make this one blue so that we can tell the difference between which one is the 100 and which one is the 200. Everything else will stay the same. So now what we have is we have two average, uh, two moving averages on the uh, on the euro dollar daily chart, and we'll do the same thing on the one hour chart. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, if anybody missed it, all we do is we click and hold down our left mouse button, and then drag and drop it on the chart to the right. We'll put in a 100, and we'll make it red, and then we'll do the same thing. Click and hold down. Whoops. Drag and drop, we'll make this one 200, and we will make it blue. So now we've got it on the one hour chart, and we'll last but not least, we'll do it on the five minute chart as well. So now we've got all of our moving averages on here. Now, how is a moving average usually used? A moving average is normally used as to, to denote bias in the market. If the market is above a certain moving average, that's normally meant to convey a bullish bias. So 
what normally happens is traders a lot a lot of times will use a moving average as a buy or a sell signal because it denotes bias and uh, you know say if it's above the market it's a bullish bias if, if it's if the market is above the moving average it's a bullish bias and below the market it's a bearish bias a lot of times they will use traders will use a break of a moving average as either a buy or a sell signal now does that always mean that the market is going to clear I mean usually what happens is when the when the moving average is broken that the market should continue to the, either the downside or the upside but does it always happen no so you always want to make sure that you have a protective stop in there as well okay so now let's uh, you know at, and we can see the same thing here on the one hour time frame you can clearly see that the euro dollar has a bullish bias because it's above both moving averages so you know you'll if you see that the if you see that the uh, you know the currency pair is moving toward you know is moving towards a moving average you could you know either use that as possibly you know a, a potential support area because a lot of times the, the moving averages do act as support and resistance you can see that you know if we go back a little bit further with this chart let's take auto scroll off for a second now you know just just in, in, as an interjection we can take auto scroll off by just clicking the auto scroll button which is right next to the chart shift button and what that'll do is that'll let us go back in time so you can see right here back on the you know between the 17th and the 20th of August the moving averages converged and they provided what looks like to be support because as tr you know the market tried and tried and tried to break through but it was any it was unable to do so it tried here it did get it did stay down there for a few hours but ultimately it was not able to break through to the downside as many traders might have anticipated a lot of traders may have been looking at this and saying hey I'm gonna sell because you know it's 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 crossing below the moving averages but you know a lot of times like I like I mentioned just five minutes ago the market does not always do what it's supposed to do so you always want to have a protective stop in there in case you're wrong so that in case you're wrong you don't blow up your account and you don't risk too much on any one specific trade but anyway the uh, the market then proceeded to go to the upside and it kept rising and rising and rising so you can see here that the moving averages did provide support and which a lot of times they do they provide support and resistance if we look at it on the euro dollar daily chart you know long term it looks like the uh, the euro dollar uh, bias is to the downside because it's below both of these moving averages but you can also see classic example again right here if we take a look back in April it was using the moving average as a potential as an area of resistance did it break through to the upside yes a little bit and were there probably some intraday trading opportunities to be had there of course there's always intraday trading opportunities but eventually it it's you know it didn't it didn't even make it all the way up to the 200 time frame moving average so it just ran out of steam and then it went down and it continued to stay below the moving average line and only recently has it come back up there to test the 100 time frame moving average so you know possible you know is it possible that it could break the moving average yes and is it possible that that could be a buy signal yes will we know for sure until it happens no but you know in either in either event what you want to do is you want to have a protective stop so in case that you are wrong like I said you lose a little bit and you know you always want to make sure that you have some profit potential in your trading as well hope preferably several times that of the amount of pips that you're risking the good thing about you know the strength of the moving average that a lot of the other trading tools don't have is the fact that it's an average price everybody like if, if you put the moving average on a daily chart and another trader in another part of the world puts the moving average on a daily chart and 10 million others do the same thing you're all going to see the same exact line because it's just an average of what the actual price was so there's no ambiguity in the moving average so that's definitely a strength you know and you may want to consider you know using the moving average you know as part of you know do you necessarily I mean 
everybody has their own specific trading style, but the moving average definitely is it's a strong tool for determining bias in a forex pair. So let's go ahead and move on to another trading tool. And this one doesn't even involve an indicator. This one is this one's simply a trend line or support and resistance lines. Let's go back to our five minute chart. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to put a trend line in on these charts. What we have right here is we have a diagonal line in the toolbar. And we're going to go ahead and click this diagonal line. And we're not going to click anything until our mouse is specifically where we want it to start. So we're going to start it right here. You know, we're going to use our crosshairs. What you'll notice is that when the trend line uh, is the trend line tool is selected, that there is a crosshair alongside a vertic uh, uh, a diagonal line. You know that is, that appears instead of just your standard arrow. So that's how you know that the tool is selected. So once it's selected, you move your mouse cursor to where you want the, the trend line to begin, and then you click and hold down your left mouse button, and then you just drag it out to where you see. I mean, and it, it, the thing with trend lines is they are visual and they are in the eye of the beholder. No two people are going to have the same trend lines. This one may not be entirely accurate, but this again is just for demonstration purposes. So. That's how you general that's how you draw a trend line on an MT4 chart. Now what are trend lines normally used for? They're also used to determine bias. So basically, you know, potentially what we see right here is we see a trend to the what we what we see is a trend to the upside, even though the market is between the two moving averages right now, which denotes that it's at rest. Uh, you know what we most recently saw is a trend to the upside, and you'll and you'll see that you could argue that the trend line was providing some sort of support as well, because during this entire period it was not able to break through this trend line to the downside. It may be, it might be showing signs now of you know of going through the trend line, but you know a lot of times they'll traders will use the trend line as a you know sort of a, a sort of a, a buy or sell signal. If the market stays above the trend line, you know, they will, you know, they'll so they'll look at that as a bullish uh, a bullish bias. And if it falls below a trend line, you know, they the bias suddenly changes. But you know, you've also got other things to consider. Like I said on this moving average and this uh, chart right here, you've got a uh, you know you've got the price between your two moving average lines, and that usually denotes that it's at rest. So you want to consider the trend line as well as any other trading tool that you use in conjunction with each other, in order to determine, you know, where, you know, what you think you should be doing as far as buying or selling is concerned. So let's go ahead and put, you know, let's eyeball a trend line on here as well and see what we can do on the one-hour chart. Start here. See, what we can see right here is that we have, you know, we clearly have right here another trend line where basically it was unable to break through. The market has been unable to break through to the downside past this trend line for quite a while, dating back to August 20th. Has it broken through? Has it broken through recently? Yes, it has. But did it stop at the moving average? Yes, it did. So could it be on its way back up again? Yes, it could be. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. But again, you could have used this possibly as a short-term trading opportunity. Where, how many, how many pips would you have? You know, where it's, you know, were constituted themselves as profit potential right here. It's about seventy-five. It's about seventy pips right here. So if you sold. On a break of the trend line, you would have made about seven. You could have made a possible, possibly 70 pips. So that's just another indication that you know this, you know, that a trend line could prove as a very useful tool. And then last but not least, right here, it looks like we've got a downward bias on the uh, the euro dollar right here. So let's go ahead and eyeball a potential trend line. 
something like this right here. What you've got is you've got a break to the downside, and a couple of times the market tried to test the trend line, but it was unable to break through. And then eventually, look what happens. It goes back to the upside. It breaks through the trend line. And look at how many pips we could have made here on a break of the trend line. This is a good 300 pips or so. So these are just things to look for you know, with these trading tools. You definitely don't want to just, you know, you want to use unambiguous trading tools that certain you know that that confirm a bias when used in conjunction with an, with one another you know you don't want to just simply have a chart with no trading tools on it but you also don't want to have a chart on it with too many too many trading tools will definitely just confuse you and it will you know it'll just drive you nuts it'll just basically you know this indicator is saying that I should do this another indicator is saying I should do that this one saying that it's somewhere in between, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to keep it as minimalistic as possible, but you also do want, you don't want to be left with, you don't want to have nothing in your arsenal. So the last thing that we're going to go over is the use of a Fibonacci tool. And again, if anybody has any questions at all, please put them in the question panel. I'll do my best to answer them. So how do we apply a Fibonacci tool? on the MetaTrader chart. Basically what we have right here is we have in that same toolbar that you see the trend lines and whatnot, you'll see a, a, a couple of dotted lines with an F next to it. That's our Fibonacci retracement tool. So what we'll do here is we'll click this tool and the most common way to use a Fibonacci is to take it, you know, to start it either as in an uptrending market, which is what we have here on the on the five minute chart, we have it as uh, basically right here is we have we, we start at the swing low we'll click and hold down our left mouse button and we'll carry it up all the way to the swing high which is the, the, the you know the, the candle with with the highest high so we're connecting the lowest low with the highest high in an uptrending market so again I'll do that one more time let's Go ahead and delete this, and let's. I'll show. I'll show you how to do that one more time. So we'll use the Fibonacci retracement tool, and again we'll click and hold down our left mouse button, and we will drag it all the way up from the swing low to the swing high. And there it is. Now, what is a Fibonacci? A lot of you may be unfamiliar with what a Fibonacci is meant to. You know what is meant. It's meant to show you. Fibonacci is meant to show retracement levels. You put it. If, you don't use Fibonacci's in non-trending markets. You use them in trending markets, like what we saw here. We had a nice little move to the upside, uh, you know, earlier today in the euro-dollar pair. So what the Fibonacci tool shows you is possible areas of retracement, possible areas where the market could retrace to, and then you know either break through or continue, uh, you know, bounce off of it, basically. So what you have here is we saw the uptrend, and then look what happens. It comes all the way back down, but where does it stop? You know, it did retrace. What level did it retrace to? It retraced to the 38.2% retracement level, and it's currently finding support at this 38.2% retracement level. And you've also got a moving average in the area, which also, also can provide us support. But you'll notice that now it's between the 38.2% retracement level and the moving average. So, you know, it's denoting that it's, that's possibly denoting that the market is at rest. So basically that's what, it, but that's basically what your Fibonacci tool does. It gives you possible areas of retracement. There's three most commonly used levels. It's the 38.2% retracement level, the 50.0% retracement level, and the 61.8% retracement level. Again, those are the most commonly used levels, and there's no telling which area, where the, uh, and again, you know, there's no telling beforehand which level the market will eventually stop at and, and find support at or resistance at, or if it'll even stop at all. It's just, you know, a lot of times, more often than not, it does stop at a specific level, so it helps to be able to visualize those levels on your chart.
So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on our one hour chart. We've got another Fibonacci coming in right now. Here we go. And you'll notice right here again, it stops at the 38.2. I mean, it, it, had a, it had a tremendous rally upward over the last couple of days. But where does it, when it retraces, which eventually all markets do, you can't just, uh, you know, no trend lasts forever. But where does it find, when it finally does begin to retrace, where does it find support? It finds support at the 38.2% retracement level right here, which also lines up with this moving average. So what did it do? It bounced off the 38.2% retracement level, and now it's stuck in the middle of the zero and the 38.2. I mean, the next move is anybody's guess, but just, again, this is just to illustrate the fact that the Fibonacci tool does, and if you even look, I mean, the, the real proof is that even before it reached its high point, you can see that the 38.2% retracement level was even providing resistance up until a certain point. You can see all throughout here that it was providing resistance. So, you know, the commonly used saying in Forex is support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what, did hap what happened in this case? Resistance, this whole thing, oops, sorry about that. This whole area right here, this 38.2% retracement level right here, became support over here. So again, that's that's uh, you know that just just shows you what you know, Fibonacci used in conjunction with a trend line and a moving average can produce for you. It can make things a lot more clear. And uh, you know, as traders, we're all striving to receive some sort of clarity in what we think the market is going to do next. We're looking for clues, and these tools, more often than not, can indeed provide those clues. So that's going to be all for today. I do want to thank everybody for joining me. Uh, let me just go ahead and answer a couple of questions that came in while I was speaking. Now, Larry, uh, Larry's asking, how do you get the price at those levels? Okay, that's actually a very good question, Larry. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you asked that. There's actually a very neat trick with the Fibonacci's that I wanted to actually, I mean, I must have, it must have just slipped my mind, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the Fibonacci tool how to put prices on those levels. As you notice right here, let's go to, back to our five minutes. What we have right here is we have uh, we have our Fibonacci, but it all it shows is the levels. It shows 0 0.0, 38.2, 50.00, 61.8, and 100.0. I mean, it would be nice to have the prices in there as well. And there's a very neat trick for being able to do that. So what we'll do is we will double click on this dotted red line. And we will right click on what, once we see that the, um, these little white dots pop up, that's how we'll know that we have the tool selected and we can now manipulate it. Say, for example, if we wanted to drag it around, we could do that, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to right click on one of the dotted lines and we will go to Fibo Properties. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll stay in the Fibo Levels tab. But what we'll also do is we will double click. Here, I'm, I'm double clicking right now on this 0, 0.00. We'll, we'll click one more time to get the blue highlight button to disappear. And we'll put a space you know, with our space bar. And we will go ahead and type in percent and then dollar sign. And we will do this for every single level that we see on here. So let's do the same thing with the 38.2%. Double click, we'll notice that the 38.2 gets highlighted in blue. Let's click one more time to, be, you know, to get rid of the highlight, space, and then percent dollar sign. And we've got two more levels here as well. Let's go ahead and do the 50.0. Double click on 50.0, that will highlight it in blue. 
click one more time to the right of it, we'll get rid of the highlight, go to percent, do, type in percent dollar sign, excuse me, not percent four, and then we'll do this one more time. Let's go to 61.8%, space, percent dollar sign, not percent four, and then we'll do it lastly for the 100%, percent dollar sign, not percent four. So let's go ahead and click OK and see what comes up. And look, voila, what do we have now? We've got our prices lined up with those specific levels. So that definitely comes in handy when using the Fibonacci tool because you don't want to just sort of eyeball it and then sort of approximate. You want to try to be as, as clear as possible as to what price it's lining up with when you place it. So that's definitely a good you know, a good thing to take advantage of, and I want to thank Larry for bringing that up. Nick, your question, you're looking for a, a webinar on how to, how to place an order on the MT4 platform. I'm glad you asked. We actually, I did a webinar a few weeks ago on MetaTrader 4. Um, if you want to email me, it's jgalano at fxdd.com. That's J as in Jason. G is in giraffe, A is in apple, L is in lemon, A is in apple, N is in Nancy, O is in orange at fxdd.com. If you want to just send me an email, I will send you a reply email with the YouTube link for that specific webinar. And that goes over in detail how to place trades. So if, if that's all the questions that we have for now. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and repeat that, Nick. It's J is in Jason, G is in giraffe, A is in apple, L is in lemon, A is in apple, N is in Nancy, O is in orange, and fxdd.com. That's F is in Frank, X is in X-ray, D is in David, D is in David. So if you want to just send me an email, I'll go ahead and send you a reply email with that specific webinar link. So I, again, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and return to the same topic next week, but on a different platform. I'll show you how to do all this on another platform in case anybody is interested in checking out the other platforms that we do have to offer. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.